Hello, I'm Mrs. Dober, the seventh grade dean at Riverbend Middle School, and I want to welcome back our hybrid students starting the week of March 3rd. In this video, we're going to give you some important information you need to know as a hybrid student. If you chose hybrid for second semester, you're going to return to school starting the week of March 3rd, either Tuesday, Wednesday, or Thursday, Friday, and the rest of the days you'll be online at home. I'm going to cover what you need to know as a hybrid student when you enter the building. All students that are bus riders and walkers will enter the building in a specified door. So after you get off the bus and or walking up, you will stand on the stars painted on the sidewalk by your designated entrance. Remember to stay six feet apart at all times with your mask on. If you are a sixth grade student, you are going to get off the bus or as a walker, line up on the stars painted on the sidewalk by the doors near the main office. You'll see that with an arrow here. If you are a seventh grade student, when you get off the bus or as a walker, you will line up on the stars painted on the sidewalk by the doors on the house side of the main entrance. Again, with an arrow showing you where. If you're an eighth grade student, and when you get off the bus or has come up on a walker, you will proceed through the gates and into the side doors of house A near rooms A12 and A17. And we've shown that here with the arrows. Again, you'll remain six feet apart with your mask on. If your parents drop you off, just like always, you will follow the painted ravens for the parent drop off around the side of the building and come up by that door you see in the picture here and we will go in and you'll follow the same procedures we're going to talk about for the other doors it is very important that as you're being dropped off that it's done in the lane with the painted ravens not in the middle of the parking lot that is for your safety for everybody at their designated door, you will be called into the building one by one where a staff member will take your temperature. So as you can see here in the picture, students are separated six feet apart and then you can see Ms. Robinson there, one of our counselors, taking the temperature of a student. Then you'll proceed over where you see Ms. Moroden here, another one of our counselors, and she was making sure that you filled out your LCPS symptom checker. And again, this is gonna happen at all those different locations we talked about by grade level. You have to fill out this symptom checker every day before arrival. And on the right side of the screen right now, you see a picture of what that looks like. The first time it comes to your parents' email, but whenever they complete it, there is an option for them to add their cell phone number and then it'll come to their cell phone each morning. And we ask that it's filled out as early as possible and it must be filled out every single day. And I've put a purple arrow and there is where you can change the language. You can choose instead of English, you can choose it to be in Spanish so that you'll be able to complete it then. After you've verified that you've completed that, you'll report directly to blocks one and five. Unlike in previous years where we would go to the auditorium, the cafeteria, and the gym, we are now going straight to our block one and five classes. We do not have lockers this year, so you'll just be going to straight to blocks one and five. If you did not complete the symptom checker, you can see our new seventh grade counselor, Ms. Power, sitting in the back there at a table with a computer, and she would complete it with you, um, and then you would proceed to blocks one and five. Hi, I'm Ms. Cassander, sixth grade dean, and I'll be covering health mitigation strategies that the district has put into place to keep all of us safe. So first, one thing that you'll notice is that an automated temperature reader has been installed in the main office entrance. And again, this is to help keep everybody safe. So as you enter the building, if you come in through those main doors, we ask that you remove all hats, hoods, ball caps, or glasses so that that temperature reader can get an accurate reading. Another thing that we have in place is we have hand sanitizers located in every classroom right in the doorways, and those will be kept full at all times for you. 
An important thing to keep in mind as you are in the building is that masks must be worn at all times during the school day unless you are eating breakfast or lunch. Masks must completely cover the nose and mouth at all times. If you are ever unsure as to whether or not you are wearing your mask correctly, please feel free to ask any adult in the building. If at any point in time you refuse to wear your mask or refuse to wear it correctly, you will be sent home and there is a possibility that you could be changed to distance learning through the remainder of the year. Because this is a very important step that everybody needs to take in order for us to be in the building. So again, please make sure that you are wearing your mask correctly and at all times unless you are eating at a designated time. There are posters all throughout the school in order to help remind you of health mitigation strategies that we are all taking such as staying home when you are sick, social distancing requirements, hand washing reminders, etc. A change this school year as everybody re-enters the building for hybrid is that our auditorium is now part uh, care room in the back end of the auditorium. So if you have any symptoms of illness, and especially the ones that are located on our daily symptom checker. So if you have a headache, if you're feeling nauseous, um, fatigued, if you're congested, anything like that, you'll be sent to the care room and you must remain there until a parent can pick you up. We mentioned this earlier, but every day you must complete the symptom checker before school. And you will not be permitted to be in the building unless you can pass that symptom checker. So for example, if you go to the care room because you are nauseous and the next day you are still nauseous, you will not be able to enter the building until you're feeling better. During the normal school year, you would go to the nurse's office if you feel ill. At this time, because that is what the care room is used for, the nurse's office is only for students who are taking daily medication that has been prearranged with the nurse. Last but not least, we have bottle filling stations now in each house. So 6th, 7th, and 8th grade each have a bottle filling station. In order to keep everybody safe, students can only use the water fountain in order to fill their water bottles. Students will need to bring their own water bottles into the building. Greetings, Brave Nation. I'm Mrs. Wadley, the 8th grade dean, and I will be going over expectations and procedures of when we're in the hallways when we're in our classrooms, when we're in the cafeteria during lunch, and at dismissals. So remember that there are no lockers that were assigned to us this school year. So you will be expected to carry your belongings from one class to your next. You will be expected to report directly to that class and not stop to go to the bathroom. Our bathroom doors will be closed in between blocks. We suggest that you ask permission when class is in session and you use the bathroom during class sessions. You'll see signs like this with red arrows to remind you to maintain your six feet distance from each other. You'll also see arrows like this and patterns to remind you where you should be standing in the hallway, which is to your right, and the direction in which you should be headed. In the locker bays, we have designated the space in between the lockers for one direction only. So please pay attention to the arrow that shows you which, it, which direction you should be headed in. Remember that we walk to our right in the hallways. This is to maintain social distancing and safety for all. When we're in our classroom, the expectation is for you to go directly to your assigned desk. There will be a plexiglass shield around your desk. However, you must still wear your mask at all times, even though you have the plexiglass there. You will also need to make sure you bring your headphones and wear them, because not only the students in the classroom are participating, but we also have our peers that will be participating through the Google Meet. Your teacher will be teaching both hybrid students and distance learning students from their desk. The teacher will also have a plexiglass around their desk. You'll notice that some teachers might not be in the building. However, you'll have a proctor that will supervise the class and ensure that 
we are all learning. Lunch procedures. So we wanna make sure that you're sanitizing your hands. Each classroom has one of these dispensers. You wanna make sure that you grab some of that hand sanitizer before leaving the class to go to lunch. When you come into the cafeteria, you'll notice that there are stickers at our seats. The stickers mean that's where you should be sitting. So if you don't see a sticker, you shouldn't be sitting there. We also wanna make sure that you're facing forward and not behind you to your next neighbor. School ends at 318, and that's when we have our dismissal. You'll be exiting the building directly from your last block of the day. You will be expected to exit the building from the same doors that you entered the building. And remember, each grade level has designated entrances. Those will be the exit ways at the end of the day. You'll be expected to go directly to your bus, car, or if you're walking home. You wanna make sure that you are maintaining your six feet from each other. And if you're a bus rider, it's very important that you remember your bus number. Last but not least, we would like to cover some miscellaneous things. One thing that is important for you to know is that you must come into the building on your assigned days. If you do not come in on your assigned days, you will be marked absent. Another thing that it is important to keep in mind is that your Chromebook should be fully charged every day. Because you must stay at your assigned desk while in class, your ability to charge your Chromebook will be very limited. Phones must be off and away during the entire school day. That is another important reason that your Chromebook must be charged. If your Chromebook dies and you cannot charge it, you can't have your phone out. Lastly, the dress code applies as it would during a normal school year. On the Riverbend homepage, if you scroll down a little bit, once you get onto the page, we do still have our back to school videos from the beginning of the year linked on that page. There are some helpful ones that you may wanna watch as you reenter the building, such as the who's who video, as well as the building tour. Finally, if you have any questions at any point, please ask your Dean or your counselor. Your teachers are another great resource as well. We're all here for you and we're excited to see you again.